Open your Connected Components Workbench. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to name it Micro 810 and I'm going to select a Micro 810. I have a penchant for the QBB. I like the full straight on DC versions of these controllers. The 810 you can go all the way back to 7 and you cannot actually open up and create an L10, an LC10 in version 12. I'll select the highest version possible and add the project. Now let's take a quick browse. This is what the 810 looks like, but you've got inputs on top, outputs on the bottom, and you see that you have four outputs. This little opening right here is your only serial interface or communication interface to this controller. You don't have anything that directly plugs in there. You have to buy the little USB adapter. This opening is if you want to add the LCD. So let's go down here to LCD module, attach LCD module. Now you've got an LCD module attached to your controller. So let's go back to general and look at you see there's not much information there. Let's go to Embedded I.O. In the Embedded I.O. category, they allow you to set filters per groups of two. For inputs 0 and 1, you can pick these filters or you can stick with the default. I'm not going to change them. You do have some analog inputs, uh, not separate from the digital inputs though. Digital inputs. So we're not going to go into this in any real depth there. I just wanted to show you a Micro 810. And that's about all there is to the Micro 810. You do have a real time clock with the 810. Overall, I do not recommend that you use an, an 810 for anything other than commodity machines. Small, very, very, very small machines. And you're going to build a couple hundreds of them. It never hurts to look at the manufacturer's documentation. And usually Rockwell Automation's brochures are pretty good documents where you can get a general overview of the product. So this is the Micro 810 and it is in a class by itself. It really has no similarities to the Micro 820, 30, 50, or 70. Not in the terminal strips, not in anything but the program itself. And you see here, these are the input terminals up on top. I don't have a cursor when I get inside the image. So these are the input terminals and down below the output terminals. This is the little HMI that you can purchase for $40, $50 and snap in. And then this little door down at the bottom is where you plug in the USB adapter. In this form, you cannot connect to this to upload, download, do anything. You have to buy the USB adapter. And this gives you an idea of the resolution of the screen. You can see it's character-based, not pixel-based. So it's, it's crude graphics. Dropping down here to the four versions of the LC10, and they all have 12 I.O. My choice is always the QBB with eight digital inputs and four digital outputs. It also has four analog inputs, but no analog outputs. And those four analog inputs share the same terminals of four of your eight inputs. So if you were going to do four analog inputs, that would leave you just four digital inputs. And by the way, there's the USB adapter right there that plugs into the top of that. Other than that, there's not much to say because there's no expansion. So this is a down and dirty little PLC. And considering the price by the time you buy this adapter and maybe uh, this little HMI, you might as well buy an 820. This is a build of my Micro 810 learning station. This was the very first when the Micro 800 first came out. What we have here are six inputs and four outputs. So you can see that we have the inputs wired up over here. You see the power and then over here you see the outputs. This is the USB adapter that you have to buy separate and this is the little HMI that you have to buy separate. Altogether you would probably spend for the Micro 810, the HMI, and the USB adapter, you're probably going to spend more than $150. That's why I do recommend the 820. I think is a better buy. And you don't have to make a fancy box like 